in my most popular video so far, I talked about how many batteries you need for a 3000 watt inverter. I suggested using a 48 volt battery system, without mentioning a 12 volt system. But somebody asked a good question. He already had a 12 volt 3000 watt inverter. So how many 12 volt batteries are required? In short, you will need 3 lithium batteries or 13 lead acid batteries. But let me explain why in this video. I will also share a diagram with wire and fuse sizes. First off, let's talk about inverter efficiency. 3000 watts means that the inverter can supply up to 3000 watts of power to your appliances. However, inverters aren't perfect. They are not 100% efficient. Most inverters, including the one I'm talking about, have an efficiency of around 90%. This means that to supply 3000 watts of AC power, the inverter actually needs to pull more power from the batteries. The extra power accounts for the inefficiencies and heat generated by the inverter during the conversation process. The formula is as follows. Output power divided by efficiency equals input power. So let's do the math. 3000 watts divided by 0.9 equals 3333 watts. This means your battery needs to supply 3333 watts to the inverter for it to provide 3000 watts of usable power. Next, let's figure out how many batteries you need to supply this amount of power. We will start with lithium batteries, since they are the best choice for off-grid systems. A typical 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium battery can deliver a maximum current of 100 amps, thanks to its built-in battery management system or BMS. The BMS is crucial because it protects the battery from being overworked among other protections, which can damage the cells. Let's calculate how much power one such battery can deliver. The formula becomes voltage times current equals power. So 12.8 volts, which is the nominal battery voltage, times 100 amps equals 1280 watts. So one 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium battery can supply up to 1280 watts. Do you remember our inverter needed 3333 watts? So one battery isn't enough. We need to figure out how many batteries are required to meet this demand. The formula now becomes required power divided by power per battery equals the amount of batteries or 3333 watts divided by 1280 watts equals 2.6. Since you can't have 0.6 of a battery, you will need three batteries in parallel to supply the necessary power. If you're using a larger lithium battery, say a 12 volt 200 amp hour with a 200 amp BMS. Batteries with a higher current BMS are often named as plus batteries. Let's calculate the maximum power a 12 volt 200 amp hour battery with 200 amp BMS can deliver. 12.8 volts times 200 amps equals 2560 watts. Now let's see how many batteries we need. 3333 watts divided by 2560 watts equals 1.3. In this case, you will need two of these batteries in parallel. This is a diagram we are going to use. If it feels overwhelming, allow me to explain. Now that we know how many batteries we need, let's move on to wiring and fusing. This step is crucial, because high current flows through these wires, and if they are not sized correctly, they can overheat and cause other issues. We already calculated that your inverter needs to draw 3333 watts from the batteries. 
to figure out the current this requires, we use the following formula and we become 260 amps. So your system will be pulling 260 amps from the batteries at full power. It's important to include a safety margin to ensure your wires and fuses can handle a bit more than the maximum current. This safety margin is typically 25%. The formula now becomes 260 amps times 1.25 equals 325 amps. So we need wires and fuses that can handle at least 325 amps. Let's figure out the wire size first. Wires are rated by how much current they can carry without overheating. It looks like a 2 odd or 70 mm square cable can carry 325 amps. But upon closer inspection, we cannot fit a fuse between the maximum current the inverter draws and the maximum current of the wire. So we have to increase the size of the cable to 4 odd or 120 mm square. A fuse would fit in between the max current of 325 amps in the system and the max current of the wire, which is 440 amps. But this cable is hard to work with and is not readily available. If you can find this cable, then you will need to use a 400 amp fuse. But to make things easier, you can split the current across two smaller wires. We use the maximum current and divide it by two cables. 325 amps divided by 2 equals 163 amps per wire. A 2 gauge or 35 mm square cable can carry 205 amps. So using two of these in parallel gives you plenty of capacity. We have a total current capacity of 410 amps. It's important to note that the wires I'm using are rated at 105 degrees Celsius insulation temperature. I have linked these wires in the description. If you're going to use other wires with a lower temperature rating, you have to recalculate the wire sizes. The fuse should protect the cables, so it needs to be rated slightly below the wire's capacity, but above the maximum current draw. Applying this to the fuse size, it should be rated between the maximum current of the system, which is 325 amps, and the maximum current the wire can handle, which is 410 amps. A 350 amp mega fuse fits in between these two values and would be ideal. Now, let's discuss the connections between the batteries and the bus bars, which is a crucial part of the setup. Why use bus bars, you might ask? Because if you wire two interconnecting cables like this, we will have four lux per battery terminal, which is not allowed. We should use a maximum of three lux per terminal. And if we connect the batteries to the bus bar instead of to each other, the wires have to carry less current. So we can use less thick wires. The current from battery three doesn't need to travel through the wires of battery 1 anymore. Now, let's connect the batteries to the bus bar. Each battery in this case can deliver a maximum current of 100 amps, because the BMS limits the current to 100 amps. Just like before, we need to apply a safety margin of 25% to ensure everything runs safely. The formula becomes 100 amps times 1.25 equals 125 amps. This means that each battery could potentially handle up to 125 amps. For a 125 amp current, you will need a cable that's rated to handle this load. The appropriate size for this is a 4 gauge or 25 mm square cable. This cable can safely carry up to 150 amps, which gives us some breathing room. Now here's a safety tip. I strongly recommend fusing each parallel battery individually. Why? Because if one battery shorts out, the other batteries could dump their current into the faulty one, 
which can be dangerous. To protect each battery, we should use a fuse that's between the maximum expected current of 125 amps and the maximum current of the 4 gauge or 25mm square wire, which is 150 amps. I recommend a 125 amp MRBF fuse. This fuse is directly mounted to the battery terminals, so you don't need extra fuse holders, cables and lugs. This is one of my favorite fuses, but it only goes up to 300 amps, so we couldn't use it for our main fuse. Some people might think that the BMS inside the battery acts like a fuse, because it has a current limit. But here's the thing, the BMS is an electronic switch, designed to manage normal operating conditions, not to handle short circuits, so it won't protect against a short in the way a proper fuse would. Don't just go for a standard bus bar, since your system will carry high currents, you'll need a bus bar that's rated for at least 300 amps. I will link the list of the components in the description. Let's talk about why I recommend a 48 volt system for a 3000 watt inverter. It simplifies the wiring, reduces the current and is often more cost effective. Just take a look at this diagram, where I draw a 48 volt battery and a 3000 watt inverter. Let's look which wire and fuses we need to use. Let's repeat the calculations from before and we get a maximum of 81 amps through the cable. We use a 6 gauge or 16 mm square cable. This cable can handle a maximum current of 115 amps. The fuse should be between the maximum current in the system, which is 81 amps, and 115 amps, the max current of the cable. A 100 amp fuse is perfect. I recommend a class T fuse, because of the higher interrupting current capacity, or ICC. I made a video about fuse types, so check it out if you're interested. If you're not ready for a 48 volt system or have a camper, a 24 volt system is still easier to manage as well. Let's repeat the same calculations. We can see the maximum current in the system is 163 amps. We use a 2 gauge or 35 mm square cable. This cable can handle a maximum of 205 amps. The fuse should be between 163 amps and 205 amps. A 200 amp MRBF fuse is perfect. Lastly, let's talk about lead acid batteries. They have different characteristics, especially when it comes to how much current they should deliver. Let me share some battery design theory. Just like lithium batteries, lead acid batteries have what's called C rate, typically around 0.2 C. This means a 100 amp hour battery should only deliver 20 amps, because 100 amp hours times 0.2 C equals 20 amps. A 12 volt 100 amp hour battery should only provide 20 amps, so it doesn't significantly reduce its lifespan. If you draw more power from the battery, it will get warm, and the battery will not hold its original capacity. It will also degrade faster, which decreases the number of cycles you can do with the battery. So it's not desirable to go over the recommended C rate. You can draw more current from the battery, but it's not what I recommend. Our 3000 watt inverter at 12 volts need 250 amps, which is way beyond what a single 12 volt 100 amp hour lead acid battery should deliver. To meet the inverter's demand at a 0.2 C rate, we apply a simple formula. 250 amps times 0.2 C equals 1250 amp hours. So we need a 12 volt battery with a capacity of 1250 amp hours. This means 13 12 volt 100 amp hour lead acid batteries in parallel. They will take up a lot of space, weigh a lot, and will be much more expensive than 3 lithium batteries. 
another good reason to choose lithium batteries over lead acid. If you are interested in learning more about off-grid solar power, you can check out my book with over 2000 reviews on Amazon. I will post the link in the description. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.